There we go. There's Patrick. Now, I don't know how many of you know Patrick and David. He is a very successful podcaster. I think he made his reputation with the art of negotiation. He is considered a master negotiator. He knows how to negotiate stuff. He's written about this. He's got a podcast on it. He's made a fortune. He's very, very wealthy, very, very successful, very passionate, very charismatic, very articulate. You'll see the passion. Um, and, you know, I'll give him credit. He reached out to me a few years ago. It's been a while. And actually came out to an objectivist conference and interviewed me on stage. And uh, put it up as part of his podcast. Which was a lot of fun. And, and it was a good interview. I thought it was a good interview. I don't think he particularly thought it was a good interview. because And it wasn't viewed by, you know, it wasn't like the millions of views that some of his videos get. So he's never really invited me back. I, I don't think. But he has... But, uh, you know, he's huge. He's got 1.1 million, no, sorry, 6.1 million subscribers on YouTube and 1.1 million followers on Twitter. So this guy's big time, big, big time, right? And a lot of people admire him, a lot of people following, a lot of people listen to um, kind of what he has to say. So he has a video on tariffs. Trump's tariff plan, explain. Does it destroy or help this economy? So I thought, okay, this guy's smart, he's articulate, he's passionate. Let's hear the best case they have for tariffs. Let's do it. Now, uh, let me just say right up front, um, it's unbelievably disappointing because it's not the best case for tariffs. I could make a better case for tariffs. It, it's, it's like, a, a, I don't know. You'll see. I mean, how bad of a case it is. He's not an economist. I mean, it's worse. He has no understanding of basic economics. Um, he's got a Trumpist understanding of economics, which is no understanding of economics. He's worse than Trump in some sense. So bear with me. I mean, I, I'm sorry. It, 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 is, it is what it is. But I, I want to show you this because... This is the attempts that they make. This is who they have. They have a few pseudo-economists who, who, who make these arguments, but this is a businessman, businessman, trying to make the argument for tariffs. So let's, let's listen, and I will stop him every few seconds uh, to critique it. But let's try and follow his argument. There's all these arguments over tariffs. Mark Cuban, no, it's a horrible, it's the worst thing, you should never do it. Trump, my favorite word in a dictionary is tariffs. Everybody's talking about trade deficits, trade surplus. How the hell does this thing work out? I'm gonna explain to you tariffs in a way that you can explain to anybody moving forward. You ready? Let's just say. Okay, so, so here it is. This is explanation of tariffs um, in a way that you can explain to anybody. This, this is explanation, wow. I am an accountant and I need referrals. I want you to give me clients because I need to grow my business. Let's say you sell auto insurance and we meet each other. We're friends. We're networking at a local chamber of commerce event. We say, hey man, you give me one referral, I'll give you a referral. You want to kind of share some clients together? Let's do it. No problem. So all of a sudden, a month later, I've given you five referrals. You've given me zero. I have a referral deficit of minus five. You have a referral surplus of plus five. Trade deficit, trade surplus. You get the idea? No. 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 Why do people who have, who are this ignorant about economics, have the audacity? I'm, I'm sorry, Patrick, you'd be nice to me, but where do you get the audacity to try to explain this when you clearly have no understanding of what you're talking about? So let's, let's break this down. So he's saying trade is like referrals, but it's not. It's not, right? Referrals are potentially a trade, but they might not be. That's the point. That's why there's a referral deficit. I refer people to you, but you don't defer people to me. We haven't really traded. I've given you stuff. I haven't got anything anything back from you. But that's not, not even close to what a trade deficit is because a trade deficit is a difference 
in trade, not in referrals, in trade. What does that mean? What does a trade deficit mean? I'll use my grocery store example, which I always use. I go to the grocery store. I buy stuff. They get money. I get goods. Who's lost here? Who's worse off here? Well, actually, nobody. Because I got your goods, which is what I wanted. I gave up money for it, which is what I didn't want. It's worth less to me than the goods. That's why I did the trade. You got money and you gave goods. We're both better off because we traded. We didn't promise to do referrals. We literally traded. Only in a barter economy do we trade goods for goods. We live in a sophisticated economy where we don't trade goods for goods. I don't walk into the grocery store to buy my groceries with, I don't know, uh, you know, the, the, the iPhone I built today, that I made today, and I'm going to change my iPhone for my groceries. It's not how the world works. We have money to mediate, to make it possible for me to be building iPhones and selling them over there, get a salary from Apple, and then go into the grocery store and buy stuff with that money. And the grocery store can do that with that money, whatever they want. So when an American buys stuff from China, he got stuff, China got dollars. In Patrick Benavid's example, one guy got referrals and one got no nothing. So nothing, he got nothing. But where's the nothing in the trade deficit? What Patrick Benavid is implying is that the nothing is, that is, if I'm uh, buying Chinese goods, but China doesn't buy goods for me, then that's the nothing. B but wait a minute. China, China gave me goods, and I gave them money. Where's the nothingness here? We engaged in a trade. We both benefited. Now, it turns out China now has dollars. Now, what's China going to do with those dollars? And, and we'll get to the China thing as well. What's China going to do with the dollars? What do you do with dollars? Well, they're eager to buy some stuff from America. There's a trade deficit, so they don't buy a lot of stuff from America for a variety of reasons. Or what else can they do with the dollars? Well, they invest them in America. They buy bonds. Or... They buy stuff elsewhere around the world. They might buy oil from Saudi Arabia with those dollars. And then the dollars go to Saudi Arabia. And what does Saudi Arabia do with the dollars? They maybe buy some goods from America. And maybe they use those dollars to buy some stuff from Europeans. And then Europeans have those dollars. And what do the Europeans do with those dollars? They might buy American bonds for their pension plans. But every time one of those transactions happen, Every single time one of those transactions happens, it's a win-win. Whereas in the referral business, it's a win, I wouldn't say lose, but it's a win zero. It's a win neutral. It has nothing to do with trade deficits. Referrals are as far away from trade. I mean, they're far away from trade. I don't know what I want to say. They're, the, they're completely different. And why use referrals? When I go to the grocery store, I give them money, I get groceries. I've got a trade deficit with the grocery store. How is that bad? I don't understand how that's bad. I don't understand how that relates to zero referrals. It's just a stupid example, a dumb example. Now, I don't think he's dumb. I don't think his staff is dumb. But I think he thinks his viewers are dumb because it's so transparent. I mean, if somebody on my chat has an idea of where this even comes from, 
and how this makes sense, please let me know. But as somebody who, I, I won't call myself an economist because I'm not, but is a J, eco, economist adjacent as a finance PhD, and this is like, I'd, I mean, what grade would you give Patrick Ben David on this analogy for a trade deficit? I'd give him a straight down the line F, not even a D minus. This is an F. This is a complete F. I don't know who his target audience is. People who listen, the 6.1 million subscribers to his YouTube channel. I mean, it's so ridiculous. It's, it's mind boggling. All right, let's listen to some more. Now, think about it if a year later, five years later, you and I are giving referrals to each other. I sit down and I look at the numbers and I said, wait a minute, Johnny, I've given you 1,100 more referrals than you've given to me. Do I look, look like a dummy to you? Why do I keep giving you referrals and you give me nothing in return? You're like, uh, well, I, I take care of your clients when you send them my way. What's wrong with that? I show them, like, I want to make some commission. I'm not making any money on this deal. It doesn't matter. I'm taking care of your clients. That's exactly the relationship between U.S. and China. No, it's not. There's no referrals here. I mean, his referral example is absolutely right. Why is one taking advantage of the other? Why is one benefiting and the other one's not reciprocating? There's no, the, the point of the referrals is, there's no trade going on. But with China and America, there is a trade happening. Now, I, I, I do want to know that America doesn't trade with China. And China does not trade with America. Individuals in China and individuals in America trade with one another. Now, by the way, China is a bad example because there are all kinds of complications with China. They steal IP, and they cheat, and they do all kinds of things. So let's take Germany. Germany has a huge trade deficit with the, trade surplus with the United States. Germany. Right? But Germany and the United States don't trade. German companies trade with American companies. German individuals trade with American individuals. Americans go into a car dealership, and they buy a BMW. And that money goes to the bottom line of a German company in Germany. But not the German government and the U.S. government trade. And then over falls here. When I get my BMW, I used to have an Audi, German too. Then I bought a German car and I've given up dollars. I'm better off of that. Germany is better off. The German guy who sold me the car is better off. We're both better off. I have a trade deficit with Germany. Who cares? Why does it matter? From a macro, from a micro, from an any perspective, from a, it, it doesn't matter. So no, this is not analogous, analogous to trade between the US and China, which doesn't exist because only individuals trade. So you may be saying, Pat, why 1,100 referrals? What's the big deal? Here's what the trade deficit of U.S. with all the other countries worldwide is. If each referral equaled a billion, our trade deficit is 1.1 trillion against the rest of the world. We've given the rest of the world $1.1 trillion of business more than they've given us. What the heck? That's not true. It's just an unbelievable lie. I mean, it's not a lie because it's too stupid to be a lie. We've given the world $1.1 trillion in exchange for more than $1.1 trillion worth of goods. If I gave money to Germany and didn't get the car, then I should be upset. Why am I giving them money? I didn't get the car. I'm not getting anything from them. But I got the car. That makes all the difference. I actually engaged in trade with them. Trade, trade deficit, not giveaway deficit. I, somebody explain this to me. Yeah, I mean, it, it, this, is worse than, it, this is worse than Trump. Trump doesn't get what trade is. He thinks it's a 
losing proposition. Here, he, he won't even engage with the concept of trade. Referrals. Referrals are potential trade, but they might not be. They might be exploitative. One does them and the other doesn't. I mean, it's one thing for him to think this, but then he has a whole production team. Nobody called him on this. Nobody said, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, we don't give the world $1.1 trillion. We trade for stuff. And by the way, what would you rather have? I know what I'd have. Dollars or stuff. 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 Stuff is much more valuable than dollars. Can't do much with dollars except buy stuff. The only reason they have dollars is to buy stuff or to use them for investment. Uh, yeah, and, and, and one of Feynman says, not only that, but if we buy tools, and, and we do buy a lot of tools from Germany, Germany's very good at tool making, then we use those tools to increase our productivity. So it's not just that we have consumption goods, but we're trading for productive, productive goods. I mean, uh, you can't buy better fine tool making than German tool making. Yeah, so, God, I don't know. It's frustrating. I shouldn't have How to do this. How are we doing in America? Is this what it is? And we just give everybody business? And by the way, guess what country in the world has the highest trade surplus? Who has taken more referrals than anybody else in the world? What country do you think that is? It's China. Why? Because China has produced the most stuff. It sells the most stuff. It hasn't taken referrals. Nobody's given China referrals. It produces stuff, and we exchange our dollars for their stuff. Why is that a bad thing for China or for us? Now, again, China's complicated because there are all kinds of other bad things, like they're building a military uh, to oppose us. But how is this a bad thing? All right. Um... I don't see any point in really continuing here. Uh, you know, he, he goes on. He, he actually brings in Adam Smith. And, but it's, it's just this level. And I, I just wanted to give you a sense of this. We've only done a minute 52 in a 14-minute video. I just want to give you a sense of the level, just the quality of the argument of the pro-tariff side. Again, this is not... This is not um, a nobody. Th this is a, 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 big, a big deal. This is a 6.1 million subscriber channel. Isn't it amazing? 6.1 million? I, I have 35,000. <laughs> or, or sorry, 38,000. I'm closing in on 40. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty, pretty, pretty. It says something about the world, doesn't it? That if you actually know economics and can explain these things and advocate for sound economic policies and can talk about economics, I, I think, coherently. You could disagree with me, but I'm not incoherent and I'm not giving analogies that are completely nonsensical. You get 40,000 followers, and if you are a complete whack job when it comes to this stuff, you get 6.1. Now, I don't think he made his 6.1 million followers from talking about economics, then my view of the world would be even more dismal than it is. He made that from talking about negotiating or whatever, and from interviewing important people like me. Um, but he should lose some followers for this, <laughs> don't you think? Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, it, it, it's really bad. It's really bad. And, and the rest is no better. It just goes on and on and on. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip this, but this, of course, is the problem with, um, and happy to, if, if you guys have, I'm curious if there's anybody out there listening to the show, they're always awesome people, though they don't show up on the chat anymore. I think they're afraid I'll block them. But if there are people out there who think tariffs are a good idea, and they can find a video of somebody explaining why they're a good idea, who does a good job, 
then send it to me. I'd love to be able to, to engage with better ideas than this. They've got to be better ideas than this, maybe. Maybe. And let me just say, um, yes, China steals IP. There's an easy way to prevent that. If you're a private company, don't go to China. If you go to China and you negotiate your IP away, which is what most of these companies do, that's on you. That's on you. To the extent that China hacks its way and literally steals, it should pay a price. The U.S. government should do something about that. That is an act of war. China subsidizes its goods. It's not fair. It's not fair. Yep, they do subsidize their goods. So do we, by the way. Huge subsidies and only increasing. Under Biden, they increased a lot. They're likely to increase again under Trump. So, yeah, they subsidize, we subsidize. Maybe they subsidize more than we do, but it's not like America can stand on principle against subsidies. I mean, just think about farm subsidies, which we've been doing since the Great Depression. So we don't exactly have that moral high ground here when it comes to subsidies. But okay, they subsidize. Why shouldn't I buy subsidized Chinese goods? It's true. Some American businesses will suffer because they won't be able to compete with the Chinese manufacturer subsidized. But a lot of American businesses will benefit. And no rights of Americans have been violated. So why would the government intervene? If China wants to subsidize their businesses, let them do it. We know, or should know, I know, some of you know, that the subsidies only hurt China, don't really help them in the long run. We get cheaper stuff. China's an enemy. And the stronger it gets, the richer it gets, the bigger weapons it builds, and the more aggressive it will become vis-a-vis -vis America. Good, good point. It's an issue. It's an issue. We need to be very, very careful about China. So yes, ban exports of certain sensitive goods to China, although they get through anyway. There's a black market. You can't really stop it, but you can at least slow it down. If China becomes aggressive and clearly, unequivocally, an enemy of the United States, then yeah, embargo it, boycott it, ban trade. For example, if you're an American and you trade with a North Korean, you will go to jail. If China is truly an enemy, unequivocally an enemy, then we shouldn't trade with it. Absolutely, because it helps them. But first we have to define what that means and when that threshold happens. Uh, the goods in China are made by slave labor. That's true in some cases, sadly. Certainly in Western China, there are slave camps and uh, prison camps and uh, horrible stuff happening over there. Not the government's business. Me, you, yes. I mean, you should hesitate before you buy stuff from China. Where's this made? Who makes it? Is the government getting the revenue or other people? See, I won't buy anything from Cuba because in Cuba, everything goes to the government. There's literally no private property. In China, most stuff we buy from China goes to Chinese people. The people who actually built it, make it. So I don't mind trading with China. Now, if I knew that a good was made by slave labor, I wouldn't buy it. So it's complicated. Trade is complicated. Coming up with principles to guide trade is complicated. But put aside China for a minute. Everything Patrick Bendevid just said is applicable to Germany. And I have no problem buying anything from Germany. There are allies. They're not, try they're not stealing American IP. They're not an enemy. They don't have slave labor. They have a horrible history, but not a horrible present. 
So why wouldn't I buy stuff? Why wouldn't I buy stuff from Germany? Because there's a trade deficit and you're giving their referrals and then you're not getting any from them. How stupid can you really get? Really? I'm giving them dollars and I'm getting cool stuff from them. Win-win. And send me says, how does one find out where the money goes and what's built by slaves? Rand didn't invest in the stock market for a long time because of how much effort would have to go into vetting the companies. No, I mean, Rand didn't invest in the stock market because she didn't want to take risk with her money. She invested in the safest thing she could, which was U.S. government bonds, in spite of the fact that you could argue those bond money went to government spending. Rand did, not, Rand did not have any problem with vetting every company that she was going to invest in. That was not the consideration, as far as I know, of why she didn't invest in the stock market. It was all an issue of risk. She, had, you know, she knew what poverty was, and she worked hard to make the money, and she needed to be able to live off that money. And she invested in the safest safest investment she could. I, I've met her investment manager. I don't think he's alive anymore. But I, I, but I met on several occasions, I met with his, her investment manager, and he told me what the logic was, and it had nothing to do with vetting companies. Uh, you don't know. Uh, where the money goes, you can tell, because if, if you know anything about China, you know that China has millions of private companies. Tax rates in China are lower than they are in the United States. Now, some companies are owned by the government. But most of the stuff you buy from China is not. Most of the stuff you buy from China are private companies. Um, I wouldn't buy electronics from China, certain electronics, because those companies are likely to, or more likely to be, although I do have electronics from China, but um, those companies are more likely to be uh, particularly advanced electronics o owned or related to the government. But the money still goes to the investors. There's a stock market in China. The dividends are paid. Salaries are meted out. Profits are made. They're billionaires in China. And they're not billionaires like in Russia or government favors. They're billionaires who build businesses that are worth billions. If you go to China, you can see that China has a vast private economy. I agree with Wanda Freeman. I wouldn't deal with Huawei. Why Huawei? I wouldn't buy one of their phones. They clearly, if you do the research, influence. But it's hard to tell what is built by slave labor, for example. And then you have to decide. Am I going to do the research? How much time am I willing to do that research? And is it worth it? And for mostly... My, the answer for me is it's not worth it. So for me, this is just life. I'll buy whatever. Uh, if I know a good, if for some reason I, I discover that a good is made by slave labor, I won't buy it anymore. iPhones. iPhones, my favorite product in the world, is made where? Well, they're certainly, they're certainly put together in China. I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with Foxconn, which is actually a Taiwanese company. But they, they, they assemble the iPhones in China, and they make private profits, and they give private employees wages, and the employees are not slaves. So I have no problem with the fact that most Apple products are made in China. Fewer, they're diversifying their supply chain, but they still are. 